right, so today we're going to continue our study of permutations and combinations, and we're going to be continuing that study with Pascal's triangle and binomial coefficients. So Pascal's triangle is actually really cool. Uh, so what we do is, it's we are essentially turning a little bit of maths and a little bit of algebra into a cool geometric shape, i.e., a triangle. So what we're doing here is. Pascal's triangle is, uh, it uses the same pattern all the way through to make this triangle. And we can make this triangle as big as we want, really. But we've just got the first one, two, three, four, five rows for Pascal's triangle. So the way Pascal's triangle always starts is we start from the top and then go down. So we start at the very top and it's always just one. And so the way we go down in Pascal's triangle is every time we go down a row, we add a column. So here in row one, I've got one column, but in row two, I've got one, two columns. And in row three, I've got one, two, three columns, and so on. And so that's how we go down in Pascal's triangle. And every time we go down a row, how do we fill out this row? So you may notice that this is a bit of a weird pattern. It starts at one, and we've got ones on all the sides, but then it's two, three, three, four, six, four. It doesn't really, it doesn't really seem like it makes much sense. That's because the pattern's reasonably complex. Not so much complex, but just it's not easy to see initially. So the way we go down in Pascal's triangle is every time we make a new element, we add the two elements above it. So for two, let's start with this one because it's a little bit easier to see. Two is made from one and one. And so we get two. And for three, it's made from one and two. And for Three here is made from one and two. So what we're doing here is we're adding these each time to get the element below. So we add the two above to get the one below. Now that doesn't quite explain why I've got all these ones here. And well, that's because if we look at this one, but what are the two elements above it? Well, it's one, obviously. But then we also write a zero here. And so we can think of this as a zero plus one, which gives us one. And then over here, it's the same thing. And because each time we go down, our diagonal element is always going to be one and zero, on all of the diagonals going around the outside of the triangle, we're going to get one each time. But we can start that, but we can continue this process down. So we have zero and one goes to one, zero and one goes to one, one and one goes to two, Zero and one goes to one, one and zero goes to one, and we just keep going down, adding these elements up as we go. And so here we get the bottom line here, and then we have zero plus one goes to one, and then one plus three goes to four, three plus three goes to six, three plus one goes to four, and one plus zero goes to one. Now we can continue this triangle down. So if I was to do the next line, then it'd be zero 